we had went through in our actions, and this has gone on for almost 10 years, and so this, our statements today are not spurious. I mean, these are, these are really things we've thought about and bounced off of each other and, and other people who know about the community and religious movements and things like this. When you left, when you came out, did you come out alone or did your... I came out alone. Uh -huh. And you still have family members in the community? Or no, uh, my wife had um, left before me and uh, also taken our daughter, so I was alone there in the community. Did you reunite with your wife when you came out or no? No. You were on your own? Yeah. What was it that finally, you said you believed right up until the day you left, what was it that finally made you make that leap? Um, well, we had a favorite, one of another favorite expressions in the community was, uh, wherever God is, there is peace. And um, I just knew I didn't have peace. And I didn't have any theological answers or uh, uh, sociological or any kind of answers, really. All I knew was I didn't have peace. And I couldn't live in a place anymore where I didn't have peace. And so that's why I left. So the torment of it really just kept gnawing at you? Mm -hmm. all, all those years? That was it, yeah. And he, when you were in the community, could you read about these matters? Could you talk to other theologians? Could you read religious books, etc.? cetera? Um, as, as, uh, like I said, I was one of the higher leaders mm -hmm. most of my time in there, so I had more freedom to do that type of thing. In fact, I would be go with Gene Spriggs or uh, Eddie Wiseman and David Jones and myself and Spriggs would go and visit these other groups and talk to them. And, um, but uh, as I also stated, we really didn't know what we believed. And so all, all that really registered was a gut type of feeling that mm, this is not right, you know. <laughs> I mean, when you meet another human being and the first thing you want to do is convert them to your way of thinking. Your major goal is to find a way to convert them to your way of thinking. So it doesn't sound a lot like love to me, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, uh, so you just have that kind of uh, gut feeling about it, that something was wrong. So it took time, it wasn't just one thing. And for you too, Michael, what, what finally maybe was the, the breaking point for you when you said, I'm leaving, I'm getting out of here? The, the final breaking point was when they uh, I uh, was going to a convention in Florida, a shoemaker's convention, and I was going to stop in and see my father. And on the way down, my father died that morning. The morning I left, my father died, and I didn't find out about it until that night. And I went over, and I buried my father. And when I got back to the community, they told me, Eddie Wiseman told me that I had defiled myself by going to the funeral, going near a dead body. And I just said, that's idiotic, and a few other things to him. And I walked out and took off for four and a half months and went away to think, kind of blessed in a way, and, um, because they wanted me to come back. And then I came back, and things had really changed in the community in the four months that I had gone away to think. Um, they had started their morning sacrifices and really drilling each other in the mornings. and. Um, they wouldn't allow me to see my children or my wife for, I think it was about six or seven weeks. Because you had gone to your father's funeral. Right. I'd been defiled, and they were afraid that I was going to bring something back in, um, you know, some kind of defilement to defile my wife's thinking with or something. Do you see them, uh, how do you see someone like Eddie Wiseman? Uh, is it a, uh, is it a, a form of... I don't know, mental illness? Is it uh, uh, some sort of uh, defect? What, what is it that would, I mean, it sounds very odd to think that you would go to a funeral and you'd be defiled. No, no, Eddie, Eddie's a wonderful guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, we know Eddie very well. But uh, Eddie is just saying the things that he's heard from Gene. Mm -hmm. that's, mm -hmm. that's all Eddie does, pretty much. Do you think they ever question Gene? Oh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> oh, uh, per, uh, personally, you mean? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Not usually, no. But, oh. but quietly and inside. You inside know. themselves. Oh, yes, definitely. Yeah, if you question him up, up like I did, mm -hmm. um, you, just, you start losing your authority and uh, you start getting talked about in the meetings. And you wouldn't know if you tried, say, when you were in the community, if you two tried to have a conversation about well, what do you think about this teaching of Gene's one of you might turn on the other. Right, exactly. Report them. That's why we didn't 
even though we were best friends, we would not cross that boundary. We might talk about a problem that we're seeing going on in the community. Mm -hmm.